Hello and welcome back to Africa Arise and thank you for tuning in and uh, as usual if you haven't subscribed if you like these videos consider liking sharing subscribing and if you are not watching on Facebook consider following and don't forget to ask your questions in the comment section below and uh, I will soon come back to you now we have done the installation of scratch we have done the installation of Python However, this video is dedicated for children who want to get started with programming in Scratch. So, beginning programming in Scratch by building your own computer games. This is going to be a three-part series because I am afraid to make it too long. I don't want to make it one hour because uh, I'm afraid it will be actually monotonous or boring. So if I just make it a little bit of a three-part series broken down into 20 minutes, that will be fine. So now we want to go and look into the interface of Scratch, the interface of Scratch, so that we begin to get going. So without further ado, if you are really pumped up to get started with programming, go ahead and let's get into the screen and see what we have. So the interface of Scratch is divided in many parts. So we are going to dwell in the, we are going to look at all these areas one by one. So the three part series as it is going to, to the first one is going to first look at this upper bar over here. And the, the second one is going to look over here on this other right part. And the third one is going to look at this part. There are a lot of hidden things over here. You can see we have got things like costumes and the, all these things. We have got things like uh, sprites. We have got things, all these things. So we are going to talk a little bit in brief about all these areas. Then we go ahead. We also come over here we talk about these things over here and later on we come back we actually we actually talk about this part and the things that you can do and what are all these things called and after that you'll be ready to get going so this is going to be a three-part series and thank you for watching and until next time Welcome back to computer science and congratulations for getting this far and I hope you are enjoying yourself. So we are back and we are talking about Scratch introduction to computer science and we are talking about Scratch so that you get started with programming. And if we went through uh, the introduction to computer science, that's where the value begins to show now. So you are not going to have a lot of challenges because uh, if you listened very well and followed along properly, you are going to understand and begin to see some of the terms we were talking about in action right now. And if you haven't, unfortunately, you will have two choices. It's either you start from here and be able to pay careful attention or you go back to those three part three series a three-part series which we did on computer science introduction to computer science part one to three if you haven't watched those videos and if you haven't followed along started with us i definitely ask you to go and listen to those uh, videos it's about one hour 30 minutes and they are really really worth it so you are not going to have a lot of problems with this one because the now we are talking about scratch so you need to understand what scratch does and how it operates i'm drinking my water right now you have to bear with me so now 
let's talk about the interface of this software scratch the reason i wanted you not to is not to use it over the browser is because i wanted you to have an instance whereby you are able to do it even on your computer without having to be uh, having to go all the way to the browser to log in and log out this and that you see and uh, again i know that uh, most of you are children who are learning this scratch so it will be good for you to have uh, after watching these videos that i'm posting either you are watching on a uh, facebook or you are watching on youtube you'll be able to have a spare time to practice without looking at the videos play along and see what could be happening yeah so now once you install scratch let me close this one and show you what you can do let me say leave my scratch is pinned here to the taskbar but for you it could be just on the desktop as other icons of mine are showing over here so i'm just going to double click just double click right where it is on your computer and wait for it to load and once it is loaded i would like to make it the full screen because my screen is relatively a little bit larger and now this is the interface of scratch you need to know certain things before we begin to do anything i mean anything okay so let's start with the top here the top bar here then we'll come to this uh, uh side over here and then we'll talk about these uh, uh things over here over this side and all these tools so basically when you are approaching this software i would like you to think like a mechanic who has got a a tube a toolbox for a mechanic uses spanners and a lot of other tools okay so i want you to think or to take yourself as a as a mechanic and you have a toolbox and this software take it as a toolbox with the tools which you are going to do which you are going to use to implement certain uh, tasks in order to achieve certain results for example if i am a mechanic i have got different spanners and different other tools like a jagger and so forth so i use those ones to achieve the goal of fixing certain problems that are prevalent in a particular car okay so this is what you have to consider yourself as just take it simple and easy you are just a mechanic for the meantime and we are going to talk about certain ways which could be new to you if possible i kindly ask you to write some few notes and when you write those few notes each and every day just take at least 10 minutes to go through your notes before you uh you come to do any kind of uh, programming in scratch all right i know that the more you repeat those particular words or phrases we are going to introduce to you the more you get used to them and the more you get to understand them better because i know that these things are absolutely new to you but i know that with time though they may seem intimidating or threatening or seem to be big things tomorrow if you continue 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 they will become very simpler 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 and end up being silly okay these are just stupid things just take it easy and let's get together i'm going to hold your hand because i know that you haven't done this before and i am going to do my best effort so that you understand it so maybe or maybe not you have once used a particular or any other software with a scratch here is this is merely a log of scratch that you are seeing here where i am hovering and over here where you see this globe icon this globe icon or the web icon here if you just click this drop down you see that 
This is a list of languages which you can choose. So, of course, we've got all these languages that we have, Italiano, Isizulu, what, 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 what. For the meantime, if you understand English a little bit, I would like to beg you to make sure that you don't choose any of these languages. Just choose English. Just choose English. The reason I'm saying this is for many programming languages that you are going to use, you are not going to learn them in any other language. Basically, all the programming languages out there, they are written in English. So, you need to just get used to this language of English so that you go well. So, don't bother choose all these other languages. And you can hear me, I'm speaking in, in, I'm speaking in English. And I hope you are going to consider do the same. Avoid the temptations of switching to any of the other languages over here. Maybe it could be your mother tongue language. For now, avoid that temptation if you want to be a computer science in a computer scientist in the future. Just choose English. All right. Then after that, over here we've got this uh, icon and it is written file. If you click over it, it has got some three options. Number one, it is saying new. That is to say, if you want to create a new project in Scratch, you just click over here. Then you create another new project. Okay. Then another option you can say load from your computer. Maybe you've got projects already created. You can click over here and it will direct you to where you saved your project. Or you can navigate through your computer and look for where you have saved your projects. For me, I'm currently saving under the uh, music bar over here and under scratch projects and these are the projects that I have actually made before. So over here I just want to open this one, Hello World Project and I just click open or I can just double click and it opens and you can see here this is the project already created Hello World. But for the meantime I want to delete this project because I just want you to see what I am seeing. So right away, before we do anything, our interface is merely looking like this. So let's proceed on and explain all the things over here. If I click over here again, you see there is an option to save to your computer. That is to say, you can save your project to your computer as you have seen previously. In just one second ago, I opened a project which I created which is to say i saved it in my computer so you just click save to your computer like this and you give a name to your project then you click and let me just click replace over here because that is uh, the project that i had already created all right now you can also move on now let's move on to this edit button over here we have two things. We have one thing over here on the edit button. It is saying turn on turbo mode. Say for instance you have created big projects in Scratch. You want to run them or maybe it's a game that you have created in Scratch. You want to run your game. You want to play your game. For the game to play effectively and faster, for the code to execute faster and ex effectively, you may need sometimes, if your computer is a little bit slower, to turn on the turbo mode. Once you turn on the turbo mode, it is able to help your computer to run faster. And the turbo mode, once it's turned on, it indicates by showing this yellow a lightning button and the and the words turbo mode okay i am going to proceed on to turn it off just it was just for a demonstration purposes now over here this light globe light bulb icon where we have tutorials is simply showing you that uh, you can have you can watch some of the tutorials which are embedded 
which is to say which are already existing in the software scratch and you can watch them and learn from there on how to do certain things and you can see it's relatively a lot of tutorials and they don't have voices and so forth but they are simple for example i have clicked this one that demonstrates how to record sound you can see here you can take the sound icon you add sound and you click next over here you see next what they will show you what to do you can say you can drag from the motion icons and you drag these things so you are going to get familiar with these things as time goes but for now i don't want you to follow these tutorials before i do at least one two three with you but if you think you can you can go ahead and do so let's close this one for now and this is what you may what need to know that you have got pre-made tutorials for you over here although they are just short tutorials they are not that big that they can may help you to make complex games but they give you hints and brighten you up and elevate your skill level okay now over here on this space bar it's typed hello world but on yours it could be project name whatever it is written you can highlight over these words and type something like your project name maybe i want to create a a a, a game or maybe i can say snake game you see you can do you can write those things over here so, but i don't think you are going to necessarily use it a lot it is basically much useful in the scratch on the browser the one that you use on the browser but this one is, is stored as you have managed to store in your pc now what's next let's go to uh, to this uh, bottom navigation bar over here this task bar over here it's written code and over here it's written costume and over here it's written sound and you can see that in each of the tabs if you drop down and come to look in there are a lot of things that are hidden over here which you can do so let's explain in summary on each one of them but what i would like to do now is uh i want to explain this part at last the reason i want to explain this part of the code at last and this part of the costume and sound at last is because i assume that if i first come over here to the right side and explain what is happening here it will be able to help you to understand this side better okay so bear with me and let's get to it when you are looking over here we've got this flag icon if i hover over it it is it has got the words go basically it shows you that it, it is telling you to say let's go okay it is say let's go in other words this is the green flag in scratch that is that helps you to execute your code the word execute of code simply means running of code or running the blocks that you have put together because you are going to take these blocks and put them together okay you are going to take these blocks and put them together and so forth so in other words when you click over here it's going to what to tell you that it's now time to run the blocks that you have put together so you click over here to run the blocks you have collectively took out of these codes and put over here all right then this one the red button you, you i believe you are much familiar with this when it comes to robots and so forth and the stop signs on the roads it simply tells you to stop so you click it and stop the execution of the or the running of the code okay now we have got this button if i click over it see that it's minimizing this area if i click over it again nothing happens why because 
if I come over here, I click over here, this box becomes bigger. So these two boxes, one is for making this area, this workspace smaller, and the other is for making this uh, workspace bigger. And over here, this one is just for full screen. If you hover over it, it just says full screen control. If I click over it, you see that I'm in the full screen mode. And if you don't know what to do when this happens, you just come back over here, you click it again, and you are back to normal mode. Okay. Now, let's talk about uh, this area. This area. Now, begin to write your notes so that you'll be able to understand what is happening here because these words are just easy to understand but they may be confusing a little bit as you are new especially when you are going to talk about the word sprite costume what what and all these things. They are going to be a little bit confusing, but if you write notes and go through those notes each and every day, this is where I said you are going to get used and familiar with them. If you do it within a period of 10 days, I believe you'll be much better and you'll be ready to move uh, rapidly. And thank you for watching and until next time.